like, how did y'all come to bar room? I wanted something to do myself. <laughs> With that, I, I didn't want to clock in and do a bunch of jobs that I, I hated because every job I ever did, I hated mm. because I wasn't in charge of myself. And that's pretty much simply how I got to it. Really? Yeah, I just wanted to do my own thing. And uh, I remember working with my dad at a body shop. Uh, it was terrible work for me. <laughs> it was just really hard work, just manual labor, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I've got to do something. I've got to do something different than this because, I man, I was <coughs> killing myself. And uh, he was too, but he he enjoyed it and he was good at it. And I, yeah. was, I wasn't good at it. So I'm just beating myself up even more. Yeah. So that's how I came up with the idea to go to barber school. But like fast forward years, I finally got to got to do it and go to barber college and do it. I started yeah. up by myself. I, I graduated barber college in January of 2014. I opened this place March of 2014. Oh, so right. two months, I guess. Yeah. One, two. Yeah, two months. Yeah. Yeah. You already had I would not suggest that. <laughs> I would I, I would go work at another shop, but I couldn't. I had to. Right. I mean, there was no other shops. Yeah. And I didn't want anybody beat me to it either. That was a big thing too. I I seen that barber shops were kind of starting to hit, were starting to get popular mm -hmm. and all that, and I didn't want somebody to do it before me because yeah. I had no idea what young dudes were out cutting hair that was mm -hmm. had the same idea or what. That's why I started it so quick out of barber school, but probably not the best idea. You already had the name picked out and everything, or yeah, I have a, I still have a list on my phone of different things that I was gonna call it. Let's hear but, some of them. Do you remember any? Uh, I liked Sling Blade a whole lot. Like I almost called it Sling Blade. Still sounds cool to me. Uh, it was a bunch of plays on s Southern Dixie things like that. Walker yeah. County. Uh, I think that was probably the two that I came down to with Sling Blade, and um, uh, it, I almost went with Revival, which is funny. Paula down here on Main Street, she calls her, <coughs> her salon Revival. Oh, really? Yeah, completely unrelated. We didn't know, and I, I told her that. She thought it was kind of cool. I wanted it to definitely be like a uh, pay respect to the community and the county, so yeah. that's kind of where we ended up on it. It was going to be OLE, like O-L-E. Uh, yeah. Uh, I thought that could sound kind of corny. You know, I so I, I dropped that and just just yeah. went with old. Yeah. I agree. You got like a retro theme going. Yeah. Right? Is that what you wanted to do from the get go, or is that just uh, something that just yeah, happened? yeah, but not. Um, okay, I joke about it a lot of times. I didn't want it to be a Cracker Barrel. Yeah. A bunch of you know stuff hanging on the wall that looked old and all that. It was like pretty, pretty authentic. Uh, but the chairs look the way because they are old and these are the best chairs to use. So a lot of our trade is just, a, a lot of the traditional stuff still works is why mm. it kind of looks old school and all that because it is old. It's just the stuff we use, and, you know. Yeah. Worked great 50 years ago, still works yeah. great. Yeah, all my chairs are, you know, <coughs> I think my newest chair is from the 90s is the one I use just because it's electric, but it's all the same, it's all the same model. Belmont. Bel Belmont. Belmont, yeah. Do y'all have like regulars that come in here daily just to hang? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, anyhow. Nobody wants to come out to you. Shut up. Don't you go work at your own. Hey, I found a new t shirt out there. It's just Diane's face. Why don't you go work at your own? Diane. A daily amount of Diane. That's what I'm saying. Now, it needs to be a door and her head just in the. Oh, yeah. the door. Oh, no, I like the shiny. Hey, I like the shiny. But the Diane. I'm not going to go Here's Diane. We got a guy we named Hot Dog now. That's your name now. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> Eric's dad's usually in here hanging out. With yeah, my oh, dad, yeah, yeah. My dad used to be in here a lot more till my mom retired, and mm. now he's running around doing stuff with her. But yeah. he he was in here every day. Right. Well, too, we ask him to do too much. When yeah, he's he has to work on things. <laughs> he learned to not show up this much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I took him with me, and I got to watch it in there. He went on the back side of the tree and cut him a little notch about two inches deep on the back. <laughs> then he dropped, he dropped up about a foot from that notch to start his cut. And when he did, his saw was cutting so bad it just went straight uphill. Oh man, you knew you were in trouble. I was like, uh oh. 
Well, it was got scared. We got to the point so I thought to myself, if he's cutting that tree on the ankle, this is gonna be a mess. It's so, falling on my ankle. Yeah. It's falling on my ankle. And it scared me to death. But we finally, he said, I'm gonna follow that tree right over there. I said, that looks like a good spot to me. Well, the tree fell over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was in business school. Um, I had finished my two year up at Jeff State and then I was gonna go to UAB. I was actually already enrolled. Um, but I had been going to Eric for a while, getting my hair cut while he was in barber school actually. I just started going, go, I went into the school one day and, and started getting my hair cut there. And uh, I remember thinking, I was like, man, you know, I want one of those like fades or something like that. Nobody around that time was like, doing stuff like that you know and and I could see you know I was seeing some stuff on the internet and different things like that and it was like man I want a cool haircut I'm tired of getting these buzz cuts and these you know it, it was just it was terrible so I started going in there well Eric started cutting it me and him got to be really good friends and we were actually both from out here and we didn't know each other which was strange um, but he's like yeah I'm gonna open a shop in Summerton when I get out get out of school here and I was like well that's you know that's pretty much where I'm at all the time so uh, <laughs> when he opened I started coming in here but um, back to the business school thing I was enrolled at UAB and I came in here one day I was like man I just like I've been thinking I don't want to I don't want to be a guy that just sits in an office for the rest of my life and crunches numbers or makes spreadsheets or does PowerPoints that's you know that's not my thing so I uh, I was like I want to be you know hands-on doing something every day it's something that I love to do and uh, getting to talk to people too while I do it and um, so you know after I talked to Eric he's like yeah you know if you if you go to school and you do your time and when you get out if you're good enough then I'll put you in the shop and so I guess about 1200 hours into my school um, I started here part-time which would have been the he would have been open a year the summer of, of the going into the second year I would have started uh, part-time with him and then in the fall I picked up full-time what do you do in the case of an unhappy customer like you just can't we, we don't just beat them we beat them right within an inch of their life yeah. in front of everybody we do in front of everybody kids yeah. and everything so yeah. they know and we verbally don't abuse don't them. you never say nothing yeah. man we, we, we say let this be a lesson yeah <laughs> right I, every time yeah you listen here steve we'll we almost it. never everybody loves their haircuts <laughs> yeah, after the after the first like five guys <laughs> Satisfy customers from here on out. Oh, all five and the stars, city yeah. will just pick them up when we leave them back there by the dumpster. <laughs> yeah. it's we right. call it the complaint department. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, we, we really try to, like, get out of you what you want for your haircut. So, like, you know, you may say, oh, I just want it shorter here and this here. Well, we kind of know that we need to dive a little deeper into asking you, like, Okay, well, how close are you want to see? Are you want to see skin? Are you want to not see skin? Yeah. Are you, are you going to fix your hair like this every day? Because right. mm -hmm. right. this like may that. only look good in the shop. If so, you don't fix it, it's going to look like crap. Yeah, so that's <laughs> just talking and trying to get to know the client and what they do and how they actually fix their hair and stuff like that. That I'd say about 95% of the time or more that, you know, kind of goes into they're satisfied with their haircut yeah, because sure. they really yeah. try to figure out what they're wanting and do it for them. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I've worked here, I guess I'm going on this fall will be uh, four years, I guess, that I've been here. Or five. Maybe yeah, five. five. Yeah, yeah, five actually. I'm sorry. But uh, on, I can think of three people that come to my mind that were unhappy with something that I did since yeah. I've been here. One, so two, that, three. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. I would say that's pretty good odds. Yes, uh, they're no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good playing for them. Yeah. Right. <laughs>
of going through my 20s, working different sales jobs uh, that weren't going very well at all. Uh, so, and um, I was kind of thinking about different avenues I could take. Um, and around that time, the old school cuts kind of first started coming back. I had always had long hair uh, growing up and I, I remember thinking they were really cool uh, as soon as people kind of started wearing them. And um, also uh, a little bit after that, uh, after that, Eric started going to barber school and uh, I remember thinking like, man, that's really cool. And uh, Eric is married to my first cousin. So I, I didn't really even know barber school was a thing up until that point. Um, so I remember calling him and asking him questions about it. And I, I wanted to leave my job then and, uh, and start with him, but I couldn't. So uh, around the time I, when I was about to get married, then he and I had a conversation. And, you know, he's telling me the shop was getting busier and they were kind of having to turn, he and Blaze were having to turn people away like pretty much every day. And uh, they wanted somebody to start. And so he asked me what I thought about apprenticing. And uh, I talked to my wife about it. And uh, it just so happened she was really cool. And uh, she supported our family while I uh, did the apprenticeship full time to kind of knock out hours uh, as quick as I could. And uh, so I learned here in the shop up under Eric and I uh, learned from Blaze too. And um, they kind of taught me fundamentals of cutting hair and also, you know, what it's like to be a part of the community here and, uh, and actually have relationships with your clients and kind of be buddies instead of just having somebody coming in and giving you some money for a service that you give them. Like a haircut and whore. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Although sometimes that's how we get treated. <laughs> <laughs> Cut so, my hair, peasant. Something funny he was saying about the uh, learning the community. <laughs> when he first started, he was like, he had just came from these sales jobs and everything, so he's dressing nice, like, oh, you know, <laughs> slacks. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, slacks, nice coat, pea coats, all this stuff, you know. And he looked good, but. Maybe not for, you know, too much for the yeah, shop. for this shop, but it yeah. was funny because, like, you know, he look at him now. So. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> not good. Right, uh, right. Pretty much the opposite. But, yeah. but it was funny. One of our customers, uh, Fat Cat, he said, man, look at Sammy. When he started, he was wearing these peacoats, and now he's wearing a cut-off sleeve Marlboro jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome, man. <laughs> So it was before, you know, this was around. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I kind of was kind of dealing with the going back and forth, like what I want to do type of thing. Like there's stuff I'm good at, stuff that, you know, I know is going to make good money type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then just while I was in the service, like in the barracks and stuff, I'd, I'd cut hair for myself and my friends. It, it got expensive trying to like, because we didn't have cars at the time. So we'd have to like rent a taxi or something to go somewhere and get a haircut so we just I finally just bought some clippers watched some videos or something and I was like I'm gonna like just kind of learn this myself to do for some buddies and get paid in pizza or yeah. beer or something I don't yeah. know and uh, and then after a while I, I think I'd come on, on leave and it was shortly after you opened the shop mm -hmm. and uh, I was getting my haircut by him and I think it was still just him in the shop I it think was. and uh, and he's like man you should really think about going into barbering and, yeah, because uh, he was cutting his he was cutting his own hair and it didn't look that bad. <laughs> yeah, Dang. I was like, this is not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than those guys that come in with their girlfriends to their hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you know, he told me that and I was like, someone believes in me. <laughs> yeah, 
patted him on the back, yeah. slapped him on the butt, and go beat him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, so I was a medic in the Air Force, and I was doing that full time. And I got to a point where I told my wife, I was like, I don't know, I really enjoy cutting hair, and I think it'd be fun. And I know people make you know make a good living in it and stuff. And she was like, you know, all for it. So yeah. um, I started going to school down in Pensacola because I was stationed in Florida. So I went to uh, a community college down there for, for barbering. And then I uh, got out, moved up here, and uh, finished up at school where um, Barber College, where both uh, Eric and, and Blaze went. And uh, it's been a great decision. Yeah. So, I, you know, I kind of owe a big testament to to him for kind of getting me into it. So another like question I had, because the only thing I know to relate it to really is music, because I think this is a creative job. Right? I think it's for a creative person. Like you have yeah, to sir. have some kind of artistic ability, because mm-hmm. you're crafting, you're like sculpting somebody's you know yeah. head piece, bro. Yeah. Know? Yeah, definitely. So the only thing I compare to is music, and I know like different drummers that I look up to. Such as me, Blaze Rogers. Yeah, like Blaze. Right, right. <laughs> you know, when I hear them play, I know who it is. They have a style about them. Mm-hmm. Does that translate? Or yeah. is it pretty much yeah. a cut is a cut is a cut? Yeah. I think we've tried to make it to where that translate into all four of our cuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, of course, each cut's going to be a little different, but... I think that you could possibly see someone out and about, and you're like, oh, they got their cut from Old 64, mm-hmm. or opposed to yeah. somewhere else around That here. was a big goal when I started, actually. Really? Yeah, it was. Okay, I, cool. I wanted to, to when when you seen somebody out in public with a nice haircut, mm-hmm. uh, you knew that it came from this shop. That was one of my goals starting out. And uh, I kind of started that with tapering necklines out to skin instead of just doing a block neckline like yeah. everybody always did yeah started fading the necklines out to skin <coughs> this is a barber movement so don't this is what i do when i talk about it sure, <laughs> this is, i'm gonna be calm and kind of, yeah so yeah so uh fading the necklines out to skin that was a big thing and uh we came right by the time everybody's getting like pomade and new pompadours and all that stuff so yeah it's made a it's made a resurgence yeah the old style has came back a lot yeah. i think it looks fire yeah it looks good. It yeah so that that is definitely and within that you've got each person in the shop has their own style too like other people might not recognize it but we know like mm-hmm. oh they, he likes to do this little trick and this like you know yeah. mm-hmm. we can decide for each haircut yeah but uh, um, it all you, looks like it came from the same shop. Hopefully, right. hopefully. Yeah, I think it does. Do you like um, like? Cause I noticed there's a poster back here with like you know this classic cut. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys try to like build off of that to do something on your own, or you kind of stick? Yeah, that's kind of kinda just down? something so you know what ballpark people want. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. a lot of people sit down. I don't care what you do. Well, you do because mm-hmm. if we shave you all your hair off, you're gonna care about that. So, yeah. like, what? Which one of those do you like? Yeah. But that's a, those are only very specific. So those are just slick pompadours and and fades and things like that. That's just tip of the iceberg. To, oh. Okay. Uh, like internet and smartphones have been yeah. big. Yeah. Like, a lot of people. A lot of people show pictures. us pictures of their, on their phone. Like, I want something <clears throat> like this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes you gotta tell them you ain't gonna do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have to tell them I can't do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think we wrong. should. I think we oh. should tell them that if yeah. we can't, rather than attempting it and it look like garbage, that doesn't do anybody yeah. any good. You gotta have honesty from your barber, otherwise you're not gonna go back to him. Yeah. That's because good. if you got someone that's coming in with a certain style of hair and they're wanting a certain style of cut, but you know that, hey, buddy, your hair's not gonna do this. Yeah. If you wind up doing it anyways and it looks stupid, then. Well, you're gonna you're gonna look in the mirror at home and be like, well, that's that's not what I asked for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That guy sucks. Yeah. yeah, he can't. Yeah, he can't do what I want to do. <laughs> right. So, yeah. right. At the same time, though, there's a misconception among people that we only do like skin fades or like a short haircut or do yeah. we cut every length of hair? That's just what pop. Of. That's just what's popular. Yeah. 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 So if you ask us to cutting. trim long hair, we'll do it. You know, it's yeah. not a it's not a big thing. Now there's certain cuts we obviously like doing more than others, but that's uh you know that's not going to affect how how we cut your hair, you know. Yeah, one thing that's cool about right now, I guess with every kind of like whether it's clothes or hair or whatever or music, is trends aren't as big of a deal anymore. 
You know, it's like yeah. everything is popular all the time. Yeah. So it's like in very true. It's a lot more customized to just your personality yeah. versus trying to be like everybody else or whatever. And yeah, and it's like and kind of like what you were talking about about building office stuff. That's a lot of times what it is. It's like you know, taking a taking the foundation of a cut and seeing what'll work with somebody's face you know, to make everything look the most balanced or work with, you know, somebody's got a crazy cowlick back here and if it's too short, it's gonna look crazy. So, you know, you kind of figure that stuff out before you start on the haircut or whatever, or or it's what somebody does for a living or something like that, or if they play in a band or if they, whatever, you know, manage a company or something like that. You kind of have to figure that kind of stuff out. Yeah. And a lot of times, like, kind of going back on the honesty thing, some guys will come in here and it's their first time or something, and, you know, they'll have it super close and the part is way up on their head or something, and they're just like, oh, yeah, just do it like it looks, you know, or something like that. And we kind of have to kind of guide them to, yeah. like, a better a, a better spot. Yeah, somebody's, of like, been, somebody's been messing your hair up for two years. We're not going yeah, yeah, yeah. to keep doing that to you. Yeah. <laughs> And it's cool because, like, a lot of times we'll start doing that and then showing them, and then we'll get it to, like, where we feel like it should be. And they're like, oh, man, this is, like, what I've been trying to do for yeah. so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought, so, my, I thought my hair wouldn't do that kind of Yeah, thing. and then you're just developing that rapport with that person and getting to know them better, and, you know, they kind of get to know you better.